There's something fascinating about science on the grand scale. Few devices created by mankind are as complex as a synchrotron. Yet its experimental capabilities have had a massive impact on everyday lives. The UK has been at the forefront of synchrotron science for over 30 years, and today, the knowledge and expertise we've built up has made it possible for a new state-of-the-art machine to be built in the Oxfordshire countryside. Well, the vision for diamonds from the start has been to provide a research institute for the benefit of the users of the UK. The potential of the synchrotron to have what we call a very coherent X-ray source actually sort of moves us towards a whole new generation of experiments. Diamond was first established really as an idea about 10 years ago. The scientists in the UK got together, they settled down on a high brightness machine. Yeah, classically, the disciplines like biology, mathematics, physics, chemistry were separated. They worked with their own methods within their own field. With Diamond, we will have many users from the universities, from, in, from industry coming here. And so they hopefully talk to each other. And that's the kind of spirit we plan to establish at Diamond. One of the main challenges has been installing all of this vast array of equipment as you can see here. There are literally thousands of components, hundreds of magnets and power supplies, vacuum systems in a, a ring half a kilometre in, in circumference and installed to a, an incredible precision of less than one tenth of a millimetre. It's really been a, a massive exercise in coordination. Over the years, very intense X-ray sources produced by synchrotrons have had an enormous impact on many areas of science, ranging from material science to aircraft structures, right through to the structures of proteins and medical research. This huge facility can be described as a series of powerful super microscopes. Its intense pure light allows scientists to see the structure of matter at the level of molecules and atoms. The samples they study may be solid, liquid or gas, very often too small to be visible to the naked eye, but can be as large as a section of an aero engine. 